Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Forward DFW together with the Dallas Morning News. I'm Ron Corning, and we are here at Comerica's Business HQ in South Dallas. It is an amazing facility that is really designed to serve the needs of this community in a specific way. And we are going to talk to a business owner who has found success with the help of Comerica, Crystal Dobson, Cardiac Fit, file that away. You're going to meet her coming up here in a little bit. Kayla Niemer is here, though, with us right now. She's the Community Engagement Manager here at Comerica Business HQ. And thank you, Kayla, for being here and looking forward to meeting Crystal and talking about the evolution of, of her business with, with the help that you've provided and the support that you've provided. What's it like for you to know that on a daily basis you're really helping elevate this community in such key ways? Um, it's truly fulfilling. It's an honor. It's a privilege. It's a blessing. Um, I feel gracious to be able to do this type of work every day. And I think um, everyone that works on my team feels the same way. It's a beautiful facility, first Thank of you. all, let me just say. And I think that's important for people who come here to work, if they're using mm -hmm. the co-work space, folks who live in South Dallas. And it's important for their clients to know that they've got a professional space. It just kind of changes the dynamic for everyone, does it not? It does. And I think one thing that our business owners appreciate is the access, right? The accessibility, the exclusivity, being able to give that experience that they want to give that you may not be able to give um, in other spaces that you have access to, especially not at no cost. I think there are a couple really important points of differentiation between what you do here at Business HQ and some of the other co-work spaces at other branches that we've covered. This feels to me in a way almost like a business institute, like a business school. And I'll have you speak to that in a moment. But I know that it's specifically in this community because there are people here with great ideas, great connections to the community, but they have lacked access to a number of services historically. So you're leveling up in a way by being here, are you not? Yes, I think um, it was very intentional, the location um, that we're in. We understand that there's disparities that um, affect this area. And there's a lot of business owners um, that have been here but have not had the access to the resources that they truly need to build um, not only sustainable businesses, but businesses that can grow and scale. Yeah. And there are, and, and I like this, three C's, and we're going to run down through them because I think it really helps us frame this conversation in terms of the kinds of services that you provide. Access to capital, cultivation, and connectivity. Let's talk about access to capital. What does that mean? If I'm a business owner in this community and I don't have the capital, I think without the money, I have no future. You say what to that when a client comes to you? Yes, money is definitely important, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think when we talk about access to capital um, as a financial institution, we see that in so many different ways. It's not only having access to a banker or a bank, um, but it's also access to education, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know how to best prepare yourself for that access? What does that access even look like? Because yeah. access to capital is so much different than just a bank loan. There's so many different options to capital grants, loans, fun, uh, is it funding through a lender? Um, there's so Angel many different investors. investors. Maybe. Exactly. So we want to make sure that people are prepared for those conversations and they feel confident going into those conversations. And I feel that's where the cultivation comes in. So they come to you and they say, I've got a great idea, a great product. I don't know how to sell it. I don't know mm -hmm. how to start. And you have that conversation about money, but then you have the conversation about the business plan, yes. right? And what does that look like? And I bet you there are people who think to themselves, well, I don't, I don't have enough to even do a business plan. And you say, oh, no, no, you have more than, than you realize. Yeah, it's interesting because, um, you know, even if it's a startup company or it's a company that's been around for five, six years, you'll meet companies that are like, why do I need a business plan? You know, maybe they just stumbled across a great service or offering and they were making money. So there mm -hmm. was no need to think ahead, right? There was no need to have some big, huge strategy or they just didn't see the need because they were profiting and things were going as they needed to go. But for a startup, um, when you don't have a plan, it's really hard to understand what you need to do. Like, yeah. what's the yeah. first step? Um, what's most important? And I think as we look to bridge the wealth gap, we want to make sure that people are able to not only be business owners, but be profitable 
business owners. And I've often heard small business owners can get so focused on getting started and, and making it day to day that they, they don't keep even their, their transactions organized and their paperwork organized in such a way that when you call them and say, here's an opportunity for a grant, you want them to have everything organized and at the ready so they can send it off and be in, in a more competitive position. Yeah. I think the most interesting thing, um, and I'm sure uh, when you speak to Crystal later, she can attest to this, is there's two different hats that you wear as a business owner. There's mm -hmm. that CEO hat of managing the company, but then there's that services hat, right? So I think a lot of times it's the transition of the mindset of I'm not just offering a service. And of course, as a business owner, you kind of start off as a solopreneur. It's just you. Yeah. So you're wearing all the hats. And sometimes it's hard to step away from that service provider and put yourself in that seat to understand, hey, how do we manage our data? How do we manage our finances mm -hmm. and making sure that type of stuff is in order? And I was going to say, so it starts out, you feel kind of alone if you're a sole proprietor. But if you step into Business HQ, you get that third C, which is connectivity, not just to the banker, but you provide seminars and workshops with business leaders and people who also care about making sure this community can succeed. Yeah, it's essentially it's a family. It's like we're in this with you. We're along the journey with you. Um, and for our Comerica staff, especially, we may not have all the answers, but we want to connect you to the people that do. Mm. I want to run down some of the services that are offered. Mm -hmm. They're similar in ways to some of the services we've talked about at some of the other branches when it comes to co-work space and, and, and so forth. Um, secure high-speed Wi-Fi printer access, shared and private workspaces with the easy online reservation system. Again, all of that available at all the other branches. Video conference rooms. This one's unique to Business HQ. Content creation room, a green screen and teleprompter for product demos, podcasts, and content creation. You want a business owner that's starting from the ground up to be able to inform people through all these social media channels, what they do, what their product is, and do it effectively. Yes. How is that, how is that working so far? What are, what are you seeing in that regard? Um, I think the biggest thing is that, um, we, we're very intentional about the initiatives that we're putting out there, right? And we wanted to make sure, hey, we're providing um, these amazing co-work spaces to our customers, but how do we make sure we're providing these accesses to community? Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's where Business HQ kind of stands a part of. Um, we're giving you kind of some of the exclusivities that we're, we're offering our uh, customers in an intentional way. Yeah. Come, come here and get kind of full service um, support of your business and know that you have a staff here that is willing to support you in whatever way you need. So that content creation room definitely is popular. It's definitely a popular room. Um, and our customers are definitely like, hey, where's our content creation room, right? Um, but it's so interesting to see how people utilize it in so many different unique ways mm -hmm. from photographers to people who are recording learning modules or hosting live webinars. Mm -hmm. There's so many different ways that we've seen different types of industries utilize that room. So it's always a pleasure to see them utilizing the different things, the teleprompter and different things like that. And we know that content has become so very important very when it comes important, to marketing right? your brand. Um, and so I think a lot of people are also exploring what that looks like for some of those older businesses. They're like, what is content? But they yes. want to get started. Um, and so this is a great place for them to start. Well, I think that's an important thing to mention as well, is that you meet people where they are along the journey. There could be a business owner in this community who's doing pretty well, but needs that extra help to figure out what does it look like for marketing moving forward with social media and so forth. And they've also here at Business HQ really kind of put together a template with 12 essentials, some of which we've already talked about. We'll address more of them as we help you with your business roadmap with Comerica right after this. For more information on Comerica Business HQ, please visit Comerica.com forward slash Business HQ. All right, our conversation continues here from Business HQ, Comerica's Business HQ in South Dallas. Desiree Green is a small business banker for Comerica, and she works out of this location, interfacing on a regular basis um, with business owners who are, as, as we were saying before the break, who are anywhere along that journey, right? Correct. From startup to maybe trying to figure out what's next for them with marketing. Um, how's it going for you on a regular basis, interacting with these business owners who are seeing success? 
Honestly, it's amazing and it's pretty exciting. I get excited to see them from start to where they want to grow. Um, being a part of their process is phenomenal. And then partnering with Kayla here at BHQ and seeing them take advantage of the resources has been truly amazing. Do you see sort of an evolution of confidence over time as they as they start at one place and, and continue to move forward? Definitely. We have business owners who they have an idea of the business that they want to do mm -hmm. and they're literally from the start, getting their business registered, mm -hmm. um, coming here, getting a business plan, developing what they actually want to do and their purpose. So it's really amazing. And I think it's important for people to know you don't have to be a customer to use Business HQ. And it often happens the other way around. The community discovered you here. They step in and begin working on their business plan. And then they realize, well, it's important to have their money here as well, right? Correct. It's a full circle. I think once a business owners, they realize the resources that are available at Comerica Bank, mm -hmm. they automatically want to sign up to be a part of, to be a customer. You've got the 12 essentials and we've talked about some of them already. I'm going to put them up on the screen here and we can run down some of them. You, you talked about it, business plans, business forecasting. That's taking your size up data that would allow someone to sort of figure out Will the market support this business statistically what's happening and so forth? Mentorship and coaching. Who are the mentors? Who are the coaches? Are they necessarily Comerica folks or are you bringing outsiders in as well? I think it's a mix of both. Um, you have me as a small business banker that's a, a resource that's available all the time. Then you have our CDFI partners that are here. Um, mm -hmm. They're here to help develop business plans. They're here to help with business models. Um, you just have a mix of both. Yeah. And marketing, branding, we've talked a lot about that. Business certifications. You, you, when you say business certifications to certify your business or to make sure you're certified to do business? Certify your business. So there's so many different opportunities out there. Um, even when you think about government contracts and things of such, um, under those certifications. So you could be, um, it could be the minority certification or the minority women certification. Um, and that provides a whole nother, um, broad scope of access to contracts and additional um, opportunities for revenue. You allow through certification for someone to put themselves on the radar. Basically. Basically. And to yeah. let the world know, hey, I'm a business and I'm operational and I'm and, and I'm and I'm doing well. Um, technical assistance, programming, et cetera. Um, business insurance. That's interesting when you talk about business insurance. When you insure your business, what are you insuring? Well, the, the safety of your of your business is is it a um, do you have a vehicle with your business? Do you have product services? Is it a brick and mortar? There's so many things that you want to make sure that your business is protected. If you're a right? contractor, you need liability insurance for your business, right? Yes. Um, and again, things that could be overlooked as you rush ahead with a great idea, not understanding what exactly you need among those twelve essentials. Pitch decks and sponsorships. So if you're applying for a grant, you need a pitch deck. If you're applying for a sponsorship, back to our earlier point, you need to have everything organized and ready to go. I would think when you help someone with a pitch deck, it can be multi-purpose. Oh, yeah. You can use a pitch deck in so many spaces. Um, you can use it to kind of storytell what you've done, kind of show that broad view of the impact of what you're doing. Um, pitch decks can be used, obviously, for like pitch competitions to win grant money and things of such, but also when you're pitching for um, sponsorships, partnerships, mm -hmm. so many different ways. So having that visual, as we know, visuals has become so important, kind of giving that person that eye view of maybe what they can't always see on a website, but kind of more of that back end understanding of your business. And I would think, Desiree, you update that pitch deck as your business changes and grows. And it's easier if you have sort of the foundational pitch deck, you can continue to update it accordingly. Correct. Yes. Um, what is your, but you have your own pitch contest. We do. At, at Business HQ. Um, describe that for me and, and what you've seen with that. So we have our community partners. Um, we, I believe we have about 12 to 15 community partners where they offer programming and pitch competitions here at BHQ um, and we're able to sponsor them. It's so cool seeing business owners be able to, one, learn. They go through a five-week, five to six-week process and they learn how to pitch their business to gain access to resources that Kayla made. A little like Shark Tank almost. Cor it's just like Shark Tank. Oh, that's great. That's great. And, and for any of us who've watched Shark Tank, we know it can be a high pressure situation to be able to articulate yes. in a short amount of time effectively what it is you do in the value um, of your product. Um, networking. 
by the very nature of people being in this building, what does networking look like? Are you seeing two business owners meeting each other and deciding there might be some synergy there? Are you finding nonprofits that want to support and help businesses and vice versa? What does the whole thing look like when it comes to networking in this I, building? I think it's honestly a mix of both. Um, one, you have business owners that say, hey, Desiree, I need a photographer to come and shoot marketing material for my business. Do you know anyone? Well, hey, if you come to a networking event, you're going to meet probably five photographers here at BHQ. Um, also with our nonprofit organizations, they're able to connect with other nonprofit organizations to say, what are you doing that's making it work and they're able to share additional resources with each other. Yeah. And of course, there's the co-work spaces here, which can save a business hundreds of dollars a month. That is free here at Business HQ. And if you're that photographer that um, is called by Cardiac Fit and the photographer shows up and is overweight, they can have a solution with that. You see how we're tying it all together? You're going to meet that business owner when we come back here in just a moment. Stay with us. Not a Comerica customer? Well, you still have access to Comerica Business HQ. Learn more about becoming a member at Comerica.com forward slash Business HQ. All right, we are back here, and I think it's really important that we really understand what a success story looks like. Crystal Dobson is here from Cardiac Fit. Crystal, thank you for being here. And I was joking when we took that break about, you know, the photographer showing up a little overweight, he's going to get in shape with you. I think that's probably true. People in this room have said you've influenced their health yes. for the better. Yes, that's the goal of Cardiac Fit is to really ensue overall cardiac wellness um, into the community and the people that we serve. And you started in December of 2019. You yes. launched your business. And of course, my first thought is, oh, you launched a business just before the pandemic hit. But in truth, you're a telemedicine or telehealth company. You were ahead of the curve in position to kind of meet people during that interesting time when they were shut in and some people were becoming more mindful of their health, would you say? Right. So in December 2019, we were actually operating a hybrid business model where we were telehealth and then the other part we had in-person exercise classes. COVID-19 was a blessing to Cardiac Fit because we was able to quickly switch over to 100% telehealth and able to scale really quickly to give access to healthcare to individuals that did not have access and could not leave their homes. And when you talk about access to healthcare, you're you're also talking about people who are dealing with issues of hypertension, may not understand all of the factors that are kind of lending itself to that. And, and let's be honest, in the minority community, in minority communities, both Hispanic and Black, there is a higher rate, is there not, of metabolic syndrome and high cholesterol and, and other forms of hypertension? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So cardiovascular disease affects African Americans, and they're 54% more likely to die from CVD than non-Hispanic whites. 80% of, of individuals that have been diagnosed with hypertension are uncontrolled, and 50% of black women have undiagnosed hypertension. So that is something Cardiac Fit is focusing on, and that is something we're looking to improve. Well, it's not lost on me either that the issues that face minority communities when it comes to health are in part because of lack of access to health care and lack of information about right. health care. Also, there are genetic components, but, but, but that's part of it. The same is true for businesses in South Dallas that want to get started and don't have equal access mm -hmm. to capital, connectivity, cultivation, your three C's that we talked about, Kayla. So your story really speaks to all of that. So it's really bigger than just let's get fit, is it not? Right. It's, it's a bigger idea. Cardiac Fit is, is a combination of lot. I'm an African-American woman, and we are giving more access to individuals that have been overlooked and marginalized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And having a space like Co America Business HQ to operate in has been so beneficial to our growth. They've given us a sense of community, support, accountability, um, and they've just supported us throughout the way. Let me ask you, I have a feeling you would have started your business, business regardless. Correct. But yet, this is your neighborhood. This is where you live. Right. And so it does make a difference, does it not, mm -hmm. that you're able to start your business and be connected through this business HQ. What would you say to other business owners who without this really would not have an opportunity? I would say come to Business HQ. Um, I have grown so much 
since being here. They have a lot of edu educational. I've done two pitches. I've refined my pitch deck. I just got third place at a, a pitch deck because of all the experiences that I've gotten here and learned here. You were at the Essence Festival? I was just at the Essence Festival um, where we um, interacted with hundreds of mm -hmm. attendees, took blood pressures, provided free blood pressure cuffs, and educated. Um, I We printed free flyers. Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. In full color. Um, here at the business HQ that allowed the business to save money. Printing is really expensive, mm -hmm. and we spent a lot of money prior to... Marketing is expensive. Marketing is a expensive and we've saved a lot of money we've gotten a lot of exposure just being a part of business hq so if you are a small business owner i suggest you find your way to comerica you've already answered one of my questions and that is you know the pitch deck was really helpful for you what are some of the other ways you would say this business hq has kind of changed the dynamic of your business where have you benefited the most to this point would you say community mm -hmm. having access to kayla um, having access to the veterans women's group, um, having access to all the educational and programming. Um, we have team meetings here sometimes. We are completely remote. So I think it's amazing to have a building that we can come to where we can have meetings. We can. And be proud of it because it's such be a beautiful proud space. Of it because it's a beautiful space. It, it reflects. Space, correct. Yeah, it's a great. It, it, it sends the right message Correct. to your clients that, that you've got this space. Um, your incubation partner is a commitment you've made. And this is not, this is an organization or a business partner that you've planted here in the building that's available to yes. everybody, to Crystal and, and whoever. Explain to me what that is. Yes. So we um, were happy to be able to provide space to one of our uh, community partners who's our incubation partner here so is here uh, for two years and able to um, not only operate their business out of this space have their staff here um, they have a six-month incubation program that's in process right now mm -hmm. um, which has entrepreneurs that have dedicated space as they're going through that program to scale their business um, she also offers mentorship she's a score mentor um, and one of the great programs that that Crystal was able to participate in came from just a conversation, right? Um, because one thing, you were in the building. Correct. Yeah. yeah. One thing we appreciate is um, my team, myself, our partners, we work really closely together. And so we just had a conversation one day and we said, hey, it looks like a lot of businesses are struggling with a couple of things. Can we build some type of programming for this? And what was birthed out of that was a strategic growth accelerator. Um, and Crystal had the pleasure of being a part of that program as well as the NAPC program. Um, and so we're, we're happy to have our partner here. She's a world of support, world of knowledge. Mm. Um, if you meet her, her personality is is out of this world. She's, She's a veteran. She's amazing. Um, but she has been a great um, value to this space. And we would not be what we are without our partners. When you do business with other people now, because you do, and you'll form partnerships and do business and have vendors and so forth, you'll be coming up against people who have masters in business administration, right? Do you feel like having your business here and tied to Business HQ has prepared you to really compete and walk into a room and say, I got this. I think it's all about education and resources. Business HQ provides so much education. So if there's something that I don't know, I always can come here. And they've created a culture where you're not afraid to ask. It's, it's okay a, to ask. It's a safe space. Yeah. A safe it's a space. safe space for all small businesses to come. And if you don't know anything, don't be afraid to ask because there's there's other people that are similar to you. And that's one of the benefits of being in a community of other small business owners is because they're going through similar things you are. And so it's okay to not know. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to ask questions. And it's okay um, to to be able to have access to someone that can give you the things that you need. So we talked about how Business HQ meets people where they are on this continuum, whether you're just starting or really taking it to the next level. Where do you see yourself on that journey? Where would you like to go to next and how are they going to be a part of it? So Cardiff is going to be a national brand. Um, we're in the process of... Not an if, but a when is we are you going are. to be a national yeah. brand. We're in the process of launching a MVP SaaS model where we are escape, we're scaling our cardiac fit services to give access to individuals that don't have access to cardiac fit, cardiac wellness. 
And Co-America is definitely going to be a part of that journey. Yeah. And you're a part of that journey already, part of her success, meaning that individual lives are changed. People are getting a real handle on their health, living longer and living better because of her business. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it, it warms my heart. Anytime I see her post on LinkedIn or see just how she's flourishing and how she's just continuing to grow her business, um, it, it really, um, shows how much of a benefit this space is and really just shows us, hey, this is so necessary. And we're so glad that Business HQ is able to make an impact no matter how big or small on, on these business owners. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable. Kayla? Nemer, thank you from Comerica. Crystal Dobson, thank congratulations you. on all thank your success. You. Thank you. So As you much. move forward, we thank appreciate you. it. And thank you all for joining us. I'm Ron Corning for Forward DFW. We will see you next time. To learn more about other unique opportunities Comerica provides to small businesses, visit comerica.com forward slash succeed.